problem that I ran into the other evening while shooting uh, the, the video, it, it didn't turn out very good. Uh, still working on learning how to focus the, my video camera for night shooting. Uh, either way, I, was, I had this, uh, my 3G, my Stag 3G. It was uh, over the top of my car, a.k.a. the golf ball. And I was running the new Laser Genetics ND3 piece of zero. Uh, it was probably back, say, 50 yards from uh, the targets. The targets were uh, Zombie Industries shooting gallery, the clay holding cardboard setup, uh, a few other Zombie Industries uh, paper and cardboard clay holding targets. Anyways, we were illuminating with this. This was the only light that we were using, and this laser genetics device is, is phenomenal. Unbelievable. Uh, I can't say enough good things about it. I'm going to continue to do videos with this. Um, well, anyways, I had this mounted on this rail, and this rail is one of the Samson rails, one of the short Samson rails that came with this Samson Evolution guard that came with the Stag 3G rifle. They have, and I assume this is for making it lighter, lighter, lighter. Right here they've uh, gotten rid of the, the little material there. Well, I didn't notice this. And again, this is one of those things you never notice until you go out and test and shoot. You see here this, the way that this rail system, I praised this clamping system I, uh, in one of my other videos. I, I still think it's a really good clamping system. Um, you have removable piece here and the other one that came with it adjust where it actually sits on a rail. So like on say for your handguns you can put a different one on and it will like this one fits my handgun very well. If you put the other one on there it in the same slots moves it back too much. Uh, well, what I ran into with this is this is so narrow this is what's responsible for keeping it from moving down the axis of the barrel when you fire well with that being out of there there was nothing other than just the clamping side to side clamping of this quick uh, release to keep it from sliding and uh, while I was firing it it came off. Well, of course, it was dark, and I just grabbed it and put it right back on and uh, continued to fire. Well, it stayed on that time, but it stayed on because it ended up binding itself on there. As it was coming off, it got bound up. I, like, never got it off of there. Uh, and once I got in the next day, I, I, I took a look at everything and realized what the deal was. And what my first, you know, what first tipped me off was a little bit of scarring right there. And there, I knew there was no reason that that should have been nicked. Maybe on the face, but not on the edges there. And so I got to looking and, and realized that's what the problem was. Uh, so anyways, that's just one of the things. If you get a laser genetics device, uh, keep an eye on that. Look for that. Uh, watch your rail sections. Uh, see if it would have been a rail section like this upper rail here. It'd be no problem. Um, so I'm going to experiment around. I need to be able to run this unit I don't even think the other unit will work with this, so I, I may just have to put like a Magpul rail section or something like that on it. Um, come to think of it, I don't even know if the Magpul rail sections are like that. Either way, I'll solve the problem and uh, get it on there and continue to run it. It's too good of a product not to run just because of a little bit of a rail issue. Alright, thanks for watching. I was talking about the rail sections. See how there's a gap there in the rail section there. And see right down here. See how that little notch right there is able to slip right through that gap. Well, here is the other section of, that you can put in there. Now, this will not work on my handgun because it moves it a little bit where it will not clear the trigger guard. But it is wide enough. It's just perfect to wear it will not allow it to pass through there. I don't know how well you guys can see that. Sorry for the shaky video. I tried to quickly film this with my with my phone. Anyways, by removing that just one Allen key, 
it'll allow you to compensate for that. I did not do that. I didn't realize that the width was the real factor and the real difference between these two parts. Uh, I thought it was just a, an adjustment forward and aft. But uh, that again, that way, you know, that's the only way you learn. And that is another downfall. Well, not another, but that is one thing with the Laser Genetics Sub-Zero, or probably all of their stuff. Their instruction manual was crappy. I mean, it's very vague. It doesn't really give you any information about it. All it is is just shiny and it's got some good pictures. That's about it. Uh, either way, just wanted to go Here's ahead. Here's the uh, owner's manual that I was telling you about. First page tells you a little bit about it. Basically congratulates you. Tells you what was included. I'm trying to get away from the glare for you. Second page, uh, components, they're listed, uh, laser safety precautions, more safety precautions, uh, more safety precautions, uh, laser data and specifications, and this, I mean, is good, tells you some things about it, they advertise that the range in darkness is up to three miles and here it says one mile uh, another caution this is the manual that came with it now remember that oh look at that more laser caution stuff uh, activation this talks about using the push button deal uh, Replacing the battery, beam adjustment, it basically tells you to turn the lens. Tells you about your windage and elevation adjustments. That's nice. More safety precautions. And tells you about how to return it. I'd like to know, I, I would have liked to have seen it spelled out that this is for use on uh, lightened picketing rail section, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I'd just like a little bit more information. Um, yeah, it's pretty, but I'd like, I'd like more. But the product's phenomenal. Thanks for watching.